One big difference between the compound microscope and the stereoscopic microscope that we just looked at is what type of specimen can be viewed. We saw that the stereoscopic microscope is good for observing larger objects such as bugs or our fingerprints. We can use a compound microscope to see things much smaller, such as the cellular structure of plants. These specimens must be prepared on a slide in order to view them. As for the parts of this microscope, it also has a base and an arm here. You can see a light switch here, and this turn dial is called the rheostat. It controls the amount of light that shines onto your specimen. We also have our ocular lenses up here. Here we also have the course adjustment, but on this microscope, it also has a fine adjustment knob here. We have our stage here, which moves up and down using the focus knobs. And if you look at this stage, you will see the slide holders, which are these metal pieces here. Now, this microscope actually has four different objective lenses. They pivot around a central dowel and they snap into place. Each has a specific magnification. You will always, always start with the scanning objective lens. That's this one here that has the red band. If you look at the barrel of the lens, it tells you that it has a four times magnification. After making sure your microscope is set on the scanning objective lens, you insert your slide gently by sliding it in between the arms of the slide holder. Take a look at the ocular lenses. They also have a magnification written on them, 10 times magnification. So this means when you're looking at a slide under the scanning objective lens, you're seeing it at 40 times larger or 40 magnification. When you put your eyes to the ocular lenses, you may only be able to see through one lens at a time. This is because you do not have the microscope set at the correct interpupillary distance for you. Inter, meaning between, and pupil as in the part of the eye that you see through, so the distance between your two pupils. You can adjust the interpupillary distance by gently sliding the ocular lenses like this. Once you can see through both of the lenses, note the scale here. This measurement or this measures your interpupillary distance. It's a good idea to write this number down. That way you can set up any microscope more quickly. Now use the course adjustment to focus your object. Remember, this is the outside part of the knob here. Once you have it in focus, rotate to your low power lens. Taking a look at this lens has a yellow band and says 10 times magnification. So how many times total magnification are you viewing your object at? Take a second and pause the video and see if you come up with the right answer. Unless you are using the scanning objective lens, do not use your course adjustment. Let's don't get emotional about it. Just no! Okay. Adjust your focus knob again using the fine focus. 
Once you are in focus, you can again switch your objective lens, this time to high power, which is the blue band. Take note of the magnification. You will not be using the oil immersion objective lens that has a black band. You will notice that each time you change to a higher magnification, you see less of the specimen, but more detail. Here is a slide of an onion skin. You can see many small onion cells using the scanning objective lens. While you can only see portions of the cell under high power, but you can see more detail such as nuclei and cell walls and uh, other organelles. This concludes your pre-lab lecture on microscopes. Download the lab assignment pages located in the submission portal. Use the assignment pages and the directions to complete your lab. I hope to see you in my office hours for this week if you have any questions. You do have a quiz on microscopes, which you can find in the week two lab folder. See you next time.